Greetings, good people of the internet. This is the Wrestle Review, and today I'll be counting down my top 10 professional wrestlers of all time. I'm sorry that I won't have uh, pictures or videos of said wrestlers. I have the technological cap uh, capabilities of a rock. Anyway, let's get started with number 10, Ric Flair. The oldest wrestler on the list is ironically the first one on it. Uh... Ric Flair could just make anyone look like a million bucks. Most of what he did was showmanship, but I'll be damned if he wasn't the greatest showman that the wrestling business had ever seen. Uh, his matches against Ricky Steamboat are legendarily great, and he has several other five-star performances to his name. The only reason he ranks so low on the list is because some of his matches didn't age well for me. Still, long live the nature boy. Number nine, Hiroshi Tanahashi. The ace is arguably the most consistent, high-quality match wrestler of all time. I contradict myself later, but shh. He's technically sound, psychologically brilliant, and could high-fly with the best of them in his heyday. He has more five-star matches than I'd care to count, and if we even went down to just four-and-a-half-star four matches, we'd literally be here all day. But, uh, yeah, just briefly, some of my favorites include the Okada series of matches, the Wrestle Kingdom main event with Kenny Omega, and the G1 final against Kota Ibushi. Those are just some of my personal favorites. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving on to number eight, it's Kurt Angle! Ba da 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 <laughs> Kurt Angle just had it all. The look, the credentials, the ability, he was quite simply the complete package. His technical wizardry matches up with some of the best ever, which you'd expect from an Olympic gold medalist. Now, his matches may be the least consistent on this list, but when he was on, hot damn he was on. WrestleMania 21 against a man we'll get to later... Royal Rumble 2003 against Chris Benoit, the Iron Man match against, against Brock Lesnar on SmackDown, and more that we don't have time to get to go into. When he was on the top of his game, there were very few better. Number seven, Jushin Thunder Liger. Liger was so far ahead of his time in terms of moves and in-ring psychology. He mastered high-flying maneuvers that wouldn't become popular for decades, even innovating the shooting star press. But more than that, he was, he was just so cool. Liger, more than any other wrestler in history, felt like a living, breathing superhero. With the coolest mask in wrestling history, and his in-ring genius, he's got to be on the list. Number six... Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold was the most badass wrestler of all time, and it's not even close. He was also perhaps the most important wrestler in history business-wise, as he was the driving force behind the WWF's winning effort in the Monday Night War. Like Kurt Angle, some of his matches were inconsistent, but the higher end of the spectrum? Holy cow. Let's see. I mean, the submission match against Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13, against Triple H in Three Stages of Hell at No Way Out 2001, against The Rock at WrestleMania X7. These are some of the most revered wrestling matches of all time we're talking about. And of course, he was one half of the greatest wrestling rivalry in history against Mr. Vince McMahon. With a character that engaging and matches so good, he's going to make the list. Number five, Kenny Omega. Okay, this one's going to be controversial, but it's my list. I mean, they don't call him the best bat machine for nothing, guys. From his legendary quadrilogy with Kazuchika Okada that broke Meltzer's rating scale, watch my video on the Okada Omega series, by the way, to the previously mentioned Wrestle Kingdom main event with Hiroshi Tanahashi, to the G1 final with Tetsuya Naito, to the tag match with Hangman Page against the Young Bucks, uh, 
<laughs> to the IWGP US title match against Chris Jericho, the lights out match against uh, John Moxley, and many, 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 many more. His work ethic is untouchable. Only subjective favoritism keeps him from being higher on the list. Let's get to number four, which is Bret Hart. Remember when I said Ric Flair could make anyone look like a million bucks? Bret Hart could make anyone look like a billion. Give him anyone, and I mean anyone, and he could at minimum draw a three and a half star match out of them. Give him the right opponent, and he'll put on his top ten match of all time. Bret Hart was the best technician in the world for so long until our next entry came along and took his spot. He wasn't the best promo in the world, but man, he made up for it with what he could do in the ring. His best works include the, the aforementioned uh, submission match with Steve Austin at WrestleMania 13, against his brother Owen at WrestleMania 10 and at SummerSlam 1994, against the British Bulldog at SummerSlam 1992, and so many more. Number three is Brian Danielson. Danielson, or as I knew him for most of my wrestling fandom, Daniel Bryan, was Bret Hart 2.0. There has never been a technical wrestler like Brian Danielson, and there probably never will be again. He has so many excellent matches that I won't that I obviously won't be able to name them here. But um, some of my personal favorites are against John Cena at SummerSlam 2013, against Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series 2018, against AJ Styles at TLC 2018, his series of matches against Nigel McGuinness and Takeshi Morishima in Ring of Honor, his recent banger with Kenny Omega on Dynamite. I mean, he's just so good. Also, he was the driving force behind my favorite WrestleMania build of all time, against the authority going into WrestleMania 30. He is a wrestling wizard. Number two, Shawn Michaels. HBK was simply the best at doing the wrestling. He had the best moves, competed in the best matches, the whole nine yards. His run from 2002 to 2010 was arguably the best run any wrestler has ever had. He has, for my money, the two best wrestling matches of all time against the man who is number one on this list. But his wrestling resume is arguably better and most... Imp the mo I'm sorry. The, ah, the most impressive of all time. The triple threat match against Triple H and Chris Benoit at WrestleMania 20. The unsanctioned match against Triple H at, th at SummerSlam 2002. The latter match against Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10. Against Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 21. Against Mankind at In Your House Mind Games. The polarizing Iron Man match against Bret Hart at WrestleMania 12. I could go on for days. Long story short, Shawn Michaels was the god of professional wrestling. But not even the god of professional wrestling. Can hold a candle to its devil. Which brings me to number one... The Undertaker. Taker was just so good for so long and left so much of his DNA in the wrestling business that it needed a cigarette afterwards. As I alluded to earlier, he and HBK had the two best wrestling matches, in, in my opinion, just ever. At WrestleMania 25 and at WrestleMania 26 as well as another five-star performance in the first-ever Hell in a Cell match. His matches against Edge at WrestleMania 24 and SummerSlam 2008, against Brock Lesnar at No Way Out 2002, the infamous Cell match with Mankind at King of the Ring 98, against Triple H at WrestleMania 27 and 28. His, his resume is miles long, but more than that, he was simply the best character the wrestling business had ever seen. Who else could have pulled off the character of a spooky voodoo priest for 30 years? Nobody. I rest my case. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please uh, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing the video. And I will see you in the next one.